welcome to my channel if you haven't been here before or welcome back if you watch my videos and if you do i thank you so so much i love to upcycle i love to take ordinary thrifted items or items from your closet or from a garage sale and turn them into fun edgy pieces that are one of a kind something you can wear or sell i sold for many many years i haven't posted in about a month i've been traveling i went to see my grandbabies and spend time with them in North Carolina, but believe me, I thrifted. We're, we were in a RV, and so we could stop at the Goodwills and thrift stores and things like that, and so I got a bunch of new things, new old things, and I'm inspired and excited to start posting again. We are going to make three jackets out of blankets, blanket jackets slash poncho, and these are going to be pretty unique, but you know, it's artistic. You do what you want. Your blankets are going to be different. Blankets are one thing that I find are very plentiful in thrift stores and beautiful. There are so many beautiful blankets. And so here's three ideas you can do with those. Here's the first blanket we're going to work on. And I have to tell you, there will be no pattern making, no patterns. Hopefully just some simple cutting to get us the shape that we want. So I thrifted this blanket. It has a kitty on it and it's reversible, but I'm going to be focusing on this side. And this is vintage, I can tell by the tag, and it's kind of ugly. <laughs> so have you ever heard that saying, it's so ugly, it's cute? Well, that's kind of this. We're gonna try to make it really cute. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is cut this in half. And this is 54 inches tall by 53 inches wide, in case you're curious, but I certainly did not care really what size the blankets were when I picked them out. I knew I could make whatever work as long as they weren't like those skinny, um, blanket scarves or like a small lap blanket as long as it's a normal throw um, it's going to probably work so what I'm going to do is just fold this in half and I'll line that up nicely so that I know it's half and then I'm just going to cut along here and I'm going to be cutting my kitty in half Okay, I just took a minute and made sure my open sides were lined up nice. And I am just going to cut this in half. Okay, so now I have it cut in half. I'm gonna take a look at it here. So I have the kitty's head and the bottom of the kitty right here. Now, I want to sew these two pieces together, and I'll show you what I do for that. Okay, so the end of my blanket has this sort of thick band, and I wanna sew these together, but I don't want to deal with that thick band. So I'm just going to cut this off on this side and I'm going to cut it off on this end too because these are where we're sewing it together. Okay, I have my bands cut off. Now I am going to sew this. I want the blue to be my right side, but I am going to sew this together, wrong sides together because I like seams, seams. when I do like the boho hippie I just think seams add like another fun detail. So I will put it wrong sides together and I will go to my machine and I'm going to leave my vintagey looking tag on there because I think that's cute. <laughs> and it tells a story about the blanket. So I will just, I won't pin this or anything. I'll just go to my machine and I'll stick this in my machine and I'll do about between a quarter and a half an inch seam allowance. I'll have to see how this sews once I get it there. And I'll do a fairly small stitch and I'll just coordinate the thread and stitch along that line. 
Okay, I've decided to use a zigzag stitch and the largest zigzag stitch that I have, just like a straight stitch, zigzag stitches have different widths and this is the widest one. And I'm lining the edge of the blanket up with the side of my presser foot. And I'm just going to sew all the way to the end. I ended up pinning this just so that we don't get one side that stretches out and becomes extra long at the bottom or something weird. So I'll get that sewn. Okay, so here's what we have. A really long rectangle. Okay, so I want to focus on the kitty for a little bit and I want to make him look like a funky little hippie cat. And we're just gonna jazz him up a little bit and the first thing I wanted to do is make a pair of cool sunglasses for him. So I went to Pinterest and I just typed in sunglasses applique just so I can get some ideas of shapes and colors and things like that. So I found a picture I liked and I just sort of copied the shape. I freehanded this on a piece of copy paper, just kind of looking at the picture that I had found on Pinterest and that became my pattern. Okay, so once I had my pattern figured out and cut out, I went to this leopard top that I have that I thrifted, and I just took my pattern and laid it on top. Of course, this was all laid out nice and smooth, traced around it and cut it out, and I got this. Okay? So then what I did is I took that pattern and I just drew out what will be my lens shape. You know, I just basically left a border around the edge. And then I got a black t-shirt after I cut that pattern out. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Here's the pattern after I cut it out of here. And I went to my uh, black t-shirt, laid it on top, and traced around it with a piece of chalk, cut it out, and I got the pattern for the sunglass lens. And that will go right there. And I have two of those, of course. And this one will go like that. So it's starting to look like a pair of sunglasses, right? And I just want to add a little detail. I just went to a white t-shirt remnant scrap that I have. I just cut out just this little shape twice. And I that will go right there. Just to show kind of a light reflection. Just gives it a little extra dimension. Okay, so those are my sunglasses. Now I'm going to go to my machine and I'm going to stitch the black onto the leopard, the black lens. I'll just use a fairly small straight stitch. You know, maybe I'll stick a couple pins in there so it doesn't shift around before I sew. And then when I'm done with that, I'll just take some white thread and I'll just stitch that little white piece of fabric that represents a light reflection onto that. I won't take you to the machine every time I sew every little thing. That would probably bore you to death and be so time consuming, but I'll go get this sewn. Okay, so I have the little glasses all finished. Now I'm just going to lay it over top of his eyes and his head's kind of cocked. So I want to make sure I cock the sunglasses a little bit too. And then I'll just stick a couple pins in there I'm not going to sew it yet because I have a few other things I want to sew on to this little guy. And I just want to do it, sew it all at once when I get to my machine. So I'll just pin it where I want it for now. And so the next thing I want to do is make him a little headband. Okay, so the next thing I did is I went to my yarn stash and chose these four colors because I wanted to add some color to my shawl, whatever you want to call it, poncho. And um, so I made this braid with that yarn and it's 58 inches long. I made it extra long 
because I want to fold it over and I'm going to lay that just below his ears for a headband. And I will pin this on and not sew it yet because I have something else I want to add to this little guy. So I'll pin each braid. I want them to butt up against one another so that it's nice and full. Okay. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is have my kitty making a little peace sign with his paw. And you know, this is just artsy. It's for fun. You may never have a cat blanket, but it's just to sort of inspire you. Maybe you find a blanket with a lady on it and you want to do flower headband or flower crown and maybe a necklace. You know, get creative. But what I want to do is make a little paw peace sign. And this is his little arm and his chubby little paw and two fingers or claws, whatever, making a peace sign. And so I wanted to kind of match this color, but all the closest I could find was this sort of bleached out denim that I had from another project. So I just used that pattern, cut that out, and I'm going to lay that about there. Oops, I think it goes this way. And then the little braids will cover some of that. I like to layer. And so once I get that where I want it, I'll pin that on as well. And then I'll give you just a little tip on how to sew this stuff on. Okay, so now it's time to take this cool cat to the sewing machine. And I'm going to use this goldish color thread. I use this a lot on different colors it really hides well so i'll use this on everything and i will just when i sew the braid on i'll just use a fairly small straight stitch on all of this and i will start my stitching on these braids right here at the end because i want these free flowing i'll go down the center of one braid turn around and come down the center of the other braid and stop right there and then when i sew the arm I'll just stay close to the edge here and sew him on or sew the arm on. And same with the glasses. I'll just stay close to the edge. So I'll get that sewn on. Okay. So now what I want to do is take more yarn braids like this. Same colors that I used for the headband, only these are a little more narrow. And I'm going to spell out the word peace with them. And so what I'll do, these range, the braids, they're all different lengths. They range from like 26 to 33 inches. So I kind of laid it out how I'm going to, where I want it. But now I'll remove those. And I'm going to take a piece of chalk and I'm going to write the word Piece. That's why I'm using chalk. I don't like where that is. I think I'm going to move it over. Okay. And that way, when I'm at the machine, I'll have this all written on. There's my E. Okay. So when I get that how I like it with chalk. I know you can't see that very well. I will go over it with a black marker. I start with chalk because if you don't like how it looks, you can just lick your finger and erase it and uh, it's not permanent. But I do want it permanent after I get it all written on. Let's see, P-E-A. Because once you start sewing that on, this chalk, will get kind of worn away with just all the maneuvering and handling. So that's why I like to um, outline it in marker once I have it written in chalk. Okay, so I have it drawn on with my black marker. And so what I'll do with each one of these letters is I'll take my braid and the blanket to the sewing machine and so there's the tip of the C, 
I will just lay my braid over top of that, but I'll leave the knot and the fringes just dangling. And then I will just sew down the middle a fairly small straight stitch with gold thread down the middle and just follow that line around until I get to the end. And I'll do that with all the letters. Okay, so there is the word peace. Okay, so now what I want to do is put a peace sign right here. And when I get this done, I'm going to hold up the whole rectangle so you can see the placement. There's definitely more on one side than the other side. And there's a reason for that. And you will see that in a little bit as well. But right now, I just want to do a peace sign. So I just took a bowl and set it down about right there. And it took a black marker and I just traced around it. And then I just freehanded this peace symbol on the inside. And so I want to make my peace symbol with scraps of trims. Now this is from an old vintage velvet wedding blanket. And it's about all I have left. It was a wonderful blanket to work with. And then I have this bobble trim. And so I am going to take this bobble trim and I won't pin anything here, but I'll go to my machine and I'll probably just stick with my gold thread. I'm not a stickler on matching things if it really doesn't need to be matched, but I'll put these in first. And so I'll probably cut this last little bobble off so that it doesn't get in the way of the needle on my machine. And I'll just do a straight stitch all the way down to the line there. And then I'll take a smaller one and I will sew that. See, I have to cut some of these little bobbles off because they'll get in the way. But I will sew that there. And then another piece. I will sew that there. Okay, and so once I have that sewn on, I can do this piece of trim and it'll cover those edges here. And I will start with one side and I'm going to start with this side here. And I will just start anywhere on my circle, go to put it in my machine, you know, stitch, back stitch, and just make sure that I will make sure that this yellow part follows that circle all the way around. And then I'll overlap this piece and then I'll just trim it off. And then when I'm done, I will go back in and put another row of stitching on the inside of this scrap. When it's wide like that, you want to do a double row of stitching. So I will go get that sewn on. I'm going to do one. I haven't sewn this piece sign on yet because I'm going to do one more thing. I have this fat little extra braid. I actually made it for the headband for my cat and I didn't like it. So I'm not going to let it go to waste. I will probably sew that on about right there and let it just kind of dangle off the blanket here. And so I'll kind of find the center or, you know, I don't want it to be completely even. I want one side to be shorter and one to be longer. I'll just put a stitch across there. It'll fold over itself and cover that stitch and just add another detail. Okay, so I have the peace sign sewn on. Now you can see this is a really long rectangle. I put most of the decoration near this edge right here because of the way we're going to design it. So the rest of the blanket is pretty plain, over half. Because what we're going to do, I won't describe in detail how to do it yet, but just to give you an idea of why we have all the decoration off center. So what we will end up doing is creating a pocket with this end, okay? So we'll make either like a tube or I can make 
just sort of a corner and stitch it so that when we wear it, we don't have it flopping all over like this, right? And falling off. We will have a pocket, and this all makes sense to you, I promise, in the end, that we can shove this end through to hold it nice and secure. And so all the decoration is on the back and the side so if we had put decoration on all of this, it would just be buried and hidden. So I know it looks messy right now, but it'll make sense, I promise. Okay, so now what I want to do is put fringe at the very ends of this blanket. And I have this fringe and it was cut off. I think a cape or a blanket once upon a time. So I will just lay this. I won't pin it or anything. I'll just go to my machine and I'll just lay this right on top of that edge. Start stitching right there with my machine. Go forward, go back. And I will use a zigzag because this is pretty gappy. You know, I want to make sure I get as much stitching as there in there as I can. And I will just stitch all along that edge. Now I liked this color because it kind of matched the cat. I didn't have really anything in these colors. So, and I will do the same. Oh, here it is. To this edge. Okay. I'll go get that sewn on. Okay, so I have the fringe all sewn on. And what I want to do now is create that pocket for the blanket to slip into. And you could either make a pocket like this, a tube, and stitch it securely and slide your blanket into. But mine's kind of thick and I don't want it to be huge in order for that thickness. So I opted to just fold down the top corner on the side where the decorate, we have most of the decoration. I will fold down a top corner and just stitch right there so that the blanket can slip in. But before I do that, I have to sort of experiment with the end of this. So this is what will slip through there I want to just kind of bundle it up, lay it there, and make sure I'm not making it too small where it's really hard to get it through. And I don't want it too loose so that this will just slip right back out again. So I am just sort of deciding where I want to sew my pocket here. And I think this for me would be good. So I'm just gonna hold my finger there, throw that back out of the way. And so this is where I want to sew it. I'm going to lay that back over and I'm going to stick a pin in it. And then I will go to my machine and I'll stitch that across or, you know, a few stitches. Maybe I'll put a button over top of the stitching um, about five times at least because we're really gonna be tugging on that to get that in and out all the time. And I wanna make sure that's really secure. And I only really need to stitch right there, just do a good job stitching that. So I'm going to go to my machine. Maybe I'll do a zigzag back and forth for extra dur durability. So I'll go get that sewn. Okay, so I have that corner all stitched securely. And what I want to do now, I just have a couple quick little things to finish this off. So the way we cut it in half, we have half of it is finished here and half of it has a raw edge. And I am going to just go to my machine and I won't do anything with the finished edge but I'll just do a zigzag stitch 
I can either do a coordinating thread or, you know, red or something just to kind of finish that so it doesn't unravel. And so it's the opposite at the top. This side is finished and this side has the raw edge. And so I will do a zigzag stitch just from here to the end. And you can go all the way across if you want, but I don't find it necessary. And then after I do that, so I'll just do a large zigzag stitch on these two raw edges. And then I found a vintage black button. You know, it's just kind of simple and rustic. I'm going to hand sew that right where all that stitching is, where we folded that corner. I'm just going to stitch that right there. And then I will come back and show you what it looks like on. Okay, here it is all finished. So fun. Okay, the next blanket we're going to use is this one. And I just love the bright colors and the pattern. And it's so soft, almost like a velour. I just feel like I would throw this on. We're campers. We have an RV. And I could just see throwing this on every night and just be comfy and cute. <laughs> All right, let's get going. Okay, so the first thing I want to do, this is longer this way. And I have the short width going this way. And I want to fold it in half. This has a right and a wrong side because of the way it's sewn. And I want the right sides together when I fold it. I want to be looking at more of those Ross hems and seams. So I want those on the outside. So basically we're kind of turning it inside out maybe. So now I have it folded in half. Okay, now that I have it folded in half, what I want to do, so the long way is this way. I want to cut out the corners so that it begins to take the shape of a jacket or a coat or a poncho with sleeves. And so I just line these corners up. I already did this side, but it's kind of hard to tell what I did here, but I'll show you step by step right here. So I line these corners up perfectly down at the bottom where it's open. We have it folded up here at the top and I'm going to stick a straight pin right in the corner so that it doesn't shift around on me. And then I'm going to make life easy on myself. <laughs> and this is just a standard copy paper and I'm going to lay it in the corner and trace around that. Now, Oh, where's my chalk? Oh, there it is. So there's a dark line right here at the top of the copy paper. I'm going to have to use chalk so that I can see the line. I'm just going to trace the top of this paper. Now, I like to use marker. So here you can see the marker. So I'm going to use marker right there. Okay, so I have this rectangle traced out. You can't really see it, but it's traced. So I will take my pins now and I will pin along that entire rectangle, not the sides, but just where I traced it. I will pin along those all the way around. And when I get that all pinned, I'm just going to go to my machine and I don't have a serger, so I am going to use a zigzag stitch with gold thread and just follow that line up and over. Okay, and now I just need to cut those corners out. I did this side already, and this side isn't done yet, and I'm just cutting inside where I stitched. And that will begin to create sort of a jacket shape for us. Okay. All right, on to the next step. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is sort of cut out a neck hole. And this is still inside out because I'm marking with marker and I'd rather it be on the wrong side. 
And so what I did was, this is the top still, the folded part. These, This is where we just cut out down at the bottom. And so I measured all along the top here, completely along the fold, and I got 49 inches. What I'm trying to do is find the center. And so half of 49 is 24.5. And so I measured over 24.5 from the edge and I made a mark. And then from that mark, I measured over three inches and made a mark. And then from the center again, I measured over three inches on the opposite side and made a mark. And that will be my guide to make this sort of, it's not even a half circle, it's not even quite half an oval, it's just a little rounded um, line here that I just freehanded. So now I'm going to cut that out. Okay, okay, so got this little scoop cut out up here. Now I'm going to the bottom of the jacket and I'm measuring across the bottom again to find the center and mine is 32 inches across so half of that is 16 inches so I measure over 16 inches and made a mark okay and I already know where my center is up here you also need to know where your center is up here because we're going to connect these dots to cut it open so I'm going to lay my yardstick down on this center and on this center and I'm just going to draw a line in order to cut and now I will just cut down the center of this jacket okay now it's time to turn it inside or right side out okay so here's what the shape is looking like so far so cozy oh my gosh I'm not gonna want to take this off but now I want to add pockets and I have these I think they're called kneeling blankets or prayer blankets they're just like a little miniature serape sort of blanket and I'm pretty sure they're vintage my mom found these for me she's a thrifter and I don't know where she found them, but you probably don't have these at your house and may not run across them at a thrift store. But what you can do is, because I'm just going to sew them just like this. I'm not going to do anything else to them. And uh, you can find maybe at a thrift store some placemats. Sometimes there's some old cool placemats that you can maybe fold over at the top and just sew them on or vintage hand towels or some fun little hand towels with a gorgeous pattern or you might want to make your own pocket if you're comfortable with that you could use sweaters with fun patterns denim um fur i mean sky's the limit so i recommend when you're adding pockets put your garment on that you're adding pockets to and just sort of see where you want them because sometimes it's deceiving when it's laying on your table and you think you know where they're going to be and they're like way down low, you can't really get your hand in there. So I always try on my garment and see where I want them. But I'll show you how I sew them on. Okay, so here's where I want my pockets. Now I have the fringe of this one about two inches up from the bottom and I have it over four inches from this side here, from this open side. And the other one is smaller, so I'm not going to fold that over. I'm just going to leave that as is. And I am I just centered it with this one. I want it to be just kind of even with this one, and I have it four inches over. Now, I'm just going to pin these. I stuck a piece of cardboard underneath to make it easy so that I don't catch the bottom fabric when I'm pinning and 
I'll just flip this over and I won't sew that down or anything because when I sew the sides, it'll stay down. So I will just pin both these pockets on, on three sides and not the top, of course. And then I'll go to my machine and I will just stitch them on. I'll probably use a zigzag stitch because it's extra durable and pockets get used. You want to make sure you have either a double stitch or a zigzag stitch here. And so I'll pin these on and sew around both of them. While I'm at my machine as well, this is really shedding because we have this raw edge right here. I'm going to do a zigzag stitch real close to the edge here just to stop excessive fraying, almost to finish it. I don't want to do a double rolled hem because I have more to sew on and that is going to be a lot to get my needle through. So I'm just going to do a zigzag stitch all the way around to help finish it and stop excessive fraying. Okay, so now my pockets are all sewn on and what I want to do now, the last thing, is create a closure. And I have a fun, kind of simple way to do this. What I'm going to do is use this men's denim pinstripe shirt and now it's a 3X. I got a larger size intentionally, hoping that this will be a little longer since our blanket is so long. And I am going to show you how I do that. Okay, so I have my jean shirt all laid out, unbuttoned and spread open. And I want as much of these buttons and buttonholes that I can get. So I'm going all the way to the top to where the collar is. So here's the collar and there's that very top buttonhole, that one that's always hard to get a button through, <laughs> but I'm going to use it. So I'm just going to cut over to there, you know, just to get it, the collar off basically. Now there is a seam right here. And I won't measure this or anything. I'm just going to eyeball it. I want to cut about three quarters of an inch outside that seam. I will start at the bottom and I'll start about three quarters or I'll go out three quarters of an inch. That way I don't have any trouble sewing that. My presser foot will fit. I like to make life easy for myself. So that's about the width of my presser foot and that'll just sew nicely right there. So. I will just eyeball this and cut about three quarters of an inch outside that seam all the way to the top. Okay, now I have one cut out. I'm going to go to the other side with the buttons and do the exact same thing. And go three quarters of an inch outside that. Okay, I'll get that one come cut off and I'll come back. Okay, so now I want to sew these on. And here is that scoop that we cut out at the neckline. It comes to a point right here. I am going to start my collar or my buttons right at that point and I will just sew on the outside just like this and that three quarters of an inch that we cut outside that seam, I, that's how much I'm going to overlap this blanket. So I will just pin it, I won't even pin it, I'll just start it right here at the point and I'll use a zigzag stitch, overlap it about three quarters of an inch and just sew all the way along there on the outside. Now when it gets washed, this will fray and be really cute. The zigzag stitch is kind of decorative. And um, it'll be really cute. All right, I'm gonna go sew those on. Okay, here's this one. It couldn't be more cozy. Ugh. Okay, so finally I have this blanket. It's definitely like a fall theme, but it's kind of nubby and worn and definitely something 
you might pass up at the thrift store and not pick up, but uh, let's see if we can make something special with it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do to this blanket is see the sides, actually the whole entire perimeter has this beige sort of band. I'm going to cut that off for my purposes because I want to add fringe eventually and I want that off. So I'm going to take my electric scissors. I've talked about these before. I have tendonitis and they really save me when I am cutting a lot like this or a lot of repetitive cutting or heavy duty cutting. I just love them and I will put a link to them in my description. So I'll just cut this entire border off. Okay, so I have my border cut off and I saved it because I'm doing something with that later. So now what I want to do is I have this laid out. This is the length and this is the width and this is just sort of a standard size throw blanket and I'm going to fold it in half the long way. So I'm just taking the longest part and folding it in half. Okay, and now I'll make sure that's all lined up here in a little bit perfectly. But what I want to do is write out the word love on it in denim letters. And I don't want just regular denim. I am using this remnants of projects past what happens is I, I make pans and things like that and bleach them and patch them in the winter. And then when summer comes, I cut them off and make them into shorts. And then I have to do it all over again in the winter. But anyway, those are the remnants that I have. They've been patched and distressed. And so that's what I want to make my letters out of. And so I went to my craft paper and I just freehanded. Remember those bubble letters that you did on your notebooks when you were a kid and write your boyfriend's name or whatever. That's all I did here is these are about 12 inches tall and I just took my craft paper. You can use newspaper or wrapping paper for patterns. And I just kind of simply drew the word love. Okay, and so then I took my pattern to my denim pieces and cut some out. And this is what I have. Okay, I'm going to move you down a little bit so you can see a little better. Okay, so here's the L, O, V, and E. And what I want to do now is this will eventually... Be shaped like a jacket with a cutout here. So this will be the sleeve, but I'll show you that later. But I'm just helping you understand the placement of my letters. So this will be the back of the jacket. And I want the letters to go across the back and down onto the arms. That's why I want them so big. So now I'm just going to take my time and I want them up high. If I go down too low, I'm going to cut a wide sleeve here. If I go down too low, that'll get in the way of where I want to cut. So I'm keeping them up fairly high, maybe a couple inches down from the top. And then I'm just going to take my time and space them evenly. And once I get them how I want them, I will pin them on. And I always use, well, a lot of times I'll use cardboard when I pin in between layers. So, or when there are two layers. So I'll just slide this underneath just to make pinning easier. And so then I can just pin real quick since I have the cardboard. Otherwise I'd have to stick my hand under here and make sure I'm not catching that bottom layer. So I am going to just lay these out how I like them and pin them on. Okay, so now I have these all pinned on. I'm going to take the blanket to my sewing machine and sew them on and I will use my gold thread and I'll sew right around the edges of course in the O you have to go here otherwise you just follow the line around 
and I probably do about a quarter inch away from the side or a little more because I want to wash and dry this to get this to fray and if I get too close to the edge there won't be much fraying and I want as much fraying as I can get out of this so I won't go super close to the edge so I will just go to my machine with a fairly small straight stitch and get these sewn on okay so now I have the letters all sewn on and what I want to do is open it back up and fold it the opposite way. Still the length folded, but I want to see the underside of the blanket is what I mean by opposite. Okay, and then I'm going to take a second and line these corners up really good because now it's time to mark where we want to cut out the little square to define this as a jacket. Okay, so now I have my two corners lined up nicely. I am going to take a straight pin and just down in the corner, I'm just going to pin it so that it doesn't move on me when I'm measuring. And so on my jacket, Okay, I already did this side. This is what we're doing. So we're marking it out. I have a marker and some pins. So I'm showing you here how I did that. And so I took my ruler and from the outside edge, and this is the long way, on the outside edge, I measured in nine inches and then made a mark. And then I'm gonna go up here a little ways and measure nine inches and make a mark. Now, this way, I want to go 12 inches. And so I'll lay my ruler down, mark it 12 inches, come down a little ways, mark it 12 inches. And then I am going to, that does not look like nine, hold on. Yeah, uh, I don't know how that happened. Anyway, nine and nine. And I am going to just connect those dots with my ruler and draw a straight line. And then I am going to do the same with these two dots that we created, line them up with my ruler and make a straight line. And now I will just take my straight pins and I will just pin these really good so that it doesn't shift around when I'm sewing. Now, I think this is the only spot where we sew two layers of the blanket together, so it will be thick. And take your time, don't get frustrated. I guess it depends on how thick your blanket is. Set your tension dial to a higher number and then you can set your stitch length to a higher number as well. That'll help you get through this. Okay, so let's pretend I pinned all that. And now what I will do, if you have a serger or, you know, an overlock machine, this would be a great time to use that. I don't have one. I had one once upon a time and I just couldn't figure it out and I don't understand why, but anyway, but since, since I don't have a serger, I'm going to stitch this with a zigzag stitch. It'll just look a little neater on the inside and I will use the widest zigzag stitch that I have. So I will just go to my machine, start here, stitch here and all the way down. Okay. So I have my corners all stitched. I cut this one out already. What I did there is I just simply went in with my scissors and cut on this side, the inside here of the stitching, getting as close as I can, of course, without snipping the thread and just cut that out. Okay, on to the next step. Okay, so now what I want to do is basically, I'll be doing this 
on the opposite side eventually, but cut it open down the center so that we can put it on like a regular jacket. And so the first thing I did was took my yard or my uh, tape measure and I measured the length of this top folded area and I got 43 inches from one end to the other. And basically we're just finding where the center is. So it's 43 inches long. And then I divided that by two and got 21.5 inches, which is the center, 21.5 inches. So I measured from the end over 21.5 and made a mark. You can, I use a permanent marker. You can use chalk or something water soluble if you want. It's just easier for me. It's what I do. And so I went from this mark and took my ruler and measured over three inches and made a mark there. And then from the center again, I went over three inches and made a mark there. Now, I wouldn't normally draw this on, but I'm going to for you. I'm just going to draw, cut out just like a, a little curve right there. That'll be basically the neck hole. So I'm going to cut that out. And it doesn't matter what side you're doing this on. I'm marking on the inside back, but it absolutely does not matter if it's front or back. Okay, now I'm flipping it over to the front and I want to mark out where I want to cut my center line to open this up. Okay, so to find my center where I want to cut, super easy, I just, you measure across the top, we already know what this measurement is, halfway is 21.5, so I made a mark with my marker, and then down at the bottom, I measured the width, and it's 25 inches, so half of that is 12.5, so I made a mark there at 12.5. Now I will just take a yardstick and line up those two dots, draw a line, and then just cut along that line. Now, these two pieces will separate, but I'll deal with that in a second. You know, the front and the back of the blanket will separate right there. But we have it open. Okay, now I'm going to turn this inside out. This is what it's looking like. Super cute. Okay, so you may have a type of blanket that won't separate when you cut it. See this separated? And, um, but I do. So I am just going to pin this together along here just real quickly. And I'll go to my machine and just with my, a really large stitch. This doesn't have to be perfect because I will be sewing over this again with something different, but I just want to get it together so that it's easy to work with. So I will just take a few pins and they don't even have to be super close together. Go, go to my machine, fairly large stitch, pretty large stitch, and just go real close to the edge and get these back together again. Okay. So this is what it's looking like so far. It's kind of boxy with three quarter length sleeves. And um, I just wanna show you a little example of how you can change the shape. So we started, let's pretend this is our throw blanket. Most throw blankets are rectangles. They're taller and then shorter in the width. So we folded ours the tall way in half. But if you want more of a cropped jacket with long sleeves that maybe you can even cuff up, which would be super cute too, you just 
work on it the opposite way. You turn it this way, fold it in half, and do everything we just did, only with it facing this way. Okay, so now I want to, I'm eventually going to do fringe all over the place, but I want to add ties. I want to be able to tie this. I just love things with closures. So I took that border that we cut off, whoops, and I took two of these, and these are each 44 inches long, and I'm going to sew them on my jacket. And I just kind of looked in the mirror and tested it out where I want my ties and I pinned where I wanted them and that'll be like right here and that is 11 inches up from the bottom so I'll show you how we sew those on okay so now I have my jacket laid out on the table this is the bottom and here's where we cut open and here are the pins I don't know if you can see them here and here 11 inches up from the bottom I am going to take my strap and it's kind of tattered and whatever. I don't care if that's perfect or not. I actually like things kind of tattered and weird. So I am going to sew this on. We'll take, we'll start with this side. Here's my pin. I am going to lay this over top of where that pin is right in the center. So I have it marked 11 inches and I'm going to take the center of my strap and lay it right over top, half an inch in and pin that. Okay, so I can do this and you would think you'd see the stitching, right? We're gonna stitch right on the front here. But the way I do my fringe, that will cover that up. So I'm gonna actually stick another pin in there because it's kind of wide. So I'll just do that on the opposite side as well. I'll just take my strap facing that way, pin it on, and go to my machine, and then I'll just stitch over that. I'll probably stitch over it like three or four times because belts get tied and you want to make sure they're nice and durable so i'll just go to my machine and get those sewn on oh shoot okay so there's the tie and now it's time to do the fringe okay so i am going to sew fringe all the way around the sleeve all the way around the bottom and up the front and around the neckline. And you just, okay, let's just say, I'm improvising with some different fringe I have and I'll show you that in a second, but let's just say you have normal fringe like this. It needs trimmed up, but just say you have normal fringe. All you would do is go to your machine, just stick this in under the needle, put your fringe there, and sew on top of your jacket with the fringe facing out about half an inch up from the edge. I don't have normal fringe. What I have to do is I have this giant bolt. I got this at a used furniture store and they had a giant bolt of upholstery fringe. Now this would be way too heavy and thick because this is heavy to put all the way around my jacket. I wouldn't even want to wear it. It would weigh me down. So what I'm going to have to do, you probably don't need to know this because you probably have normal fringe, but I am going to take my scissor, electric scissors, and I'm going to trim this off. And so that I have some loose fringe. What the heck? Okay. <laughs> I couldn't get my scissors off. And so this will probably get messy. I have some loose fringe. And what I'll have to do 
is I am going to go around all the edges that I showed you, but I am going to have a pile of this fringe next to me at my sewing machine. And I'm going to take little bits at a time. I am going to lay it halfway on the edge, halfway on and halfway off. And I am just going to go over that with a straight stitch. And so you won't really see that stitch when I'm all done. It'll just kind of be kind of messy, kind of like an eyelash fringe. So that's what I have to do. So I'll get that sewn on. Okay, I have all my fringes cut. I just set them next to my sewing machine. And I just grab a few at a time and kind of lay them on there, spread them out a little bit, and just sew over top. Okay, here it is with the fringe all sewn on. And I cut 17 inches off the bottom of the straps. Remember I said they were 44 inches each? And uh, they were dragging the floor. And I think this would be really cute worn open and I wouldn't want them dragging the floor. So I am going to wash and dry this because I want the edges of this denim to get really frayed and or as frayed as much as they will. So I wash it on a regular cycle because I want as much agitation as I can get and then I'll dry it and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like on. Okay, here it is all finished. I love it. Thank you so much for watching.